everyone, as I look around this room, and as I see so many people, I have a feeling, folks, we're going to make history tomorrow. We're going to win here in Nevada. What a fantastic turnout. Thank you all very much for being here tonight. What's more important, you got to be a caucus tomorrow. Let me thank Stephen Bishop, Chicano Batman, James Atencio, Cana Paolo, Fantastic Negrito, Heidi Swank, Lucy Flores, Gabby Hoffman, Cold War Kids, Chewy Garcia, and Gil Cedillo. They helped make tonight, and I appreciate that very much. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, all of you have the opportunity to make American history. That's not just phraseology, that's reality. It could well be that 10, 20, 30 years from now, People will look back on what happens in Nevada and say, this was the beginning of the political revolution. When we began this campaign nine months ago, we were at 3% at the polls. We were way behind in Iowa way behind in New Hampshire, way behind in Nevada. Guess what? Things have changed. This campaign has taken on the big money interests and the economic establishment. We've taken on the political establishment. We've taken on the media establishment, and we are gaining ground every day. And we are gaining momentum. We are gaining momentum because the people are tired of establishment politics. They're tired of establishment economics. And they want to move this country in a direction where the government of the United States represents all of us, not just wealthy campaign contributors. Brothers and sisters, this campaign is gaining momentum because we are listening to the pain of the people. We are listening to the workers in Nevada and in Vermont and all over this country who are telling us they can't make it on nine bucks an hour. We are listening to the senior citizens who tell us no, they can't make it on $11,000 a year Social Security. We are listening to the young people who are saying who are saying we do not want to be paying off our student debt for the next 20 years. We are listening to our brothers and sisters in the Latino community who demand who are demanding to get out of the shadows and want a path toward citizenship. We are listening to our African-American brothers and sisters.
who are telling us they are tired of a criminal justice system which is broken. We are listening to the women who say no. We are tired. We are tired of working for 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. My friends, the history of America, the history of change in America is that change never comes from the top on down. It always comes from the bottom on up. Hundred and twenty-five years ago, workers said, we're not animals, we're not beasts of burden, we want dignity, we're going to fight to get unions. They organized for collective bargaining. Hundred and fifty years ago, African Americans and their white allies said, racism and segregation is not what America is about. Well, well over a hundred years ago, women and their male allies said, women will not be second-class citizens in this country. For many years, the gay community and their straight allies said they said that in America people have a right to love whom they want regardless of gender. And that is how change comes about. Change comes about when millions of people look around them and say, the status quo is not working, we need change. And that is the moment where we are at right now. We are at a moment when in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, most people don't know that because almost all the new income in wealth is going to the top 1%. We are living in a nation in which the top 1% now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. where the top 20 people in this country own more wealth than the bottom 150 million people. In this country today, millions of our people are working longer hours for lower wages. Our people are working two or three jobs. Mom is working, dad is working, the kids are working. Marriages are being stressed. Kids do not get the attention they need from their parents. And after all of that, 58% of all new income is going to the top 1%. So you guys ready for a radical idea? We are going to create an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. Yeah. We are going to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, 15 bucks an hour.
and we are going to make certain that women get a fair shake in the economy, pay equity for women workers. And we are going to create the millions of jobs our people need. We are going we are going to be hiring teachers, not firing teachers. We are going to rebuild our crumb infrastructure, our water systems, wastewater plants, roads and bridges. If we can rebuild the infrastructure of villages in Iraq and Afghanistan, we can rebuild Flint, Michigan. And I'll tell you what else we're going to do. We are going to demand that the wealthiest people in this country, the people who have never had it so good, they're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. When we talk about public education in the year 2016, it is not good enough to be talking about first grade through 12th grade. Today, we have got to be talking about public education, meaning free tuition at public colleges and universities. And we have got to deal with the outrage that millions of our people, some young, some not so young, are paying a significant part of their income in student debt repayment. That is why I believe we got a substantially lower student debt in this country by allowing people who have that debt to find the lowest possible interest rates they can and refinance their loans. Now, my opponents say, the establishment says, well, that's an expensive proposition. It is. And I'll tell you how we're going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it by putting a tax on Wall Street speculation. When Wall Street's greed and illegal behavior helped drive this economy into the worst recession since the 1930s, Congress bailed out Wall Street. Now it is Wall Street's time to help the middle class. And when we talk about what's going on in our country today, let us not forget for one second, there are 11 million people who are undocumented, who are living in the shadows, who are living in fear. Not only will we fight the racism and the xenophobia and the bigotry of Donald Trump, Together, together, we are going to demand that Congress pass comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship. And if Congress doesn't do its job, I will do my job and use the executive power of the President. My Republican colleagues are running all over Nevada, all over America, talking about family values. And I want everybody here to know what they mean by family values. What they mean is that no woman 
in this room, in this state, in this country should have the right to control her own body. I disagree. What they mean is that our gay brothers and sisters should not have the right to be married. I disagree. And when we talk about what goes on in America together, we are going to reform a broken criminal justice system. To me, that in America we have more people in jail than any other country on earth, largely African American and Latino. When police officers commit a, commit a crime, they will be held accountable. We will demilitarize local police departments. And we will make police departments look like the diversity of the communities they serve. And we are going to address this very, very harmful war on drugs. I believe, I believe that we must take marijuana out of the Federal Controlled Substance Act. Too, too many Americans, too many Americans have received criminal records because of marijuana possession. When we talk about what's going on in America, what we are going to do is to do what every other major country on earth is doing, guarantee health care to all people as a right. And I'll tell you what else we're going to do. As responsible adults, as parents, as grandparents, we understand that it is morally irresponsible for us to leave this planet in a way that is unhealthy and uninhabitable for our kids. Climate change. As Pope Francis and scientists around the world have told us, climate change is real. It is caused by human activity. It is already causing devastating problems in our country and around the world. We have the moral responsibility to work with China, Russia, India, countries all over the world in taking on the fossil fuel industry, transforming our energy system. I do not often get involved in state or local issues other than my own state, but I find it rather incredible that the Public Utilities Commission here in Nevada has made a decision which makes it harder for people to install solar panels. We have got to make it easier, not harder. What this Right. What this? I very much hope that state government here will reconsider that disastrous decision. Nevada has the opportunity to lead this country in solar power. Take it.
Our campaign has been about a lot of issues, but it can come down to three fundamental issues. Number one, today we have a campaign finance system which is corrupt, which is allowing billionaires to buy elections. We together are going to overturn Citizens United. We together are going to end this Republican effort at voter suppression. And together, what the political revolution is about is our country having one of the highest rates of voter turnout, not one of the lowest. And we are going to end this rigged economy. And we are going to reform a broken criminal justice system. Last month, one of the large financial institutions, Goldman Sachs, oh, you've heard of Goldman Sachs. They paid a $5 billion fine to the federal government, $5 billion for selling worthless packages of subprime mortgage loans. Now here is something interesting. A kid gets arrested with marijuana. That kid gets a police record. Executives on Wall Street who destroy the economy and the lives of millions, somehow they don't get a police record. We are going to bring back justice to the criminal justice system. And by the way, as the former chairman of the Veterans Committee, we are going to make sure that our veterans get the benefits and the health care to which they are entitled. Brothers and sisters, what this campaign is essentially about is whether we have a political system and an economy which is controlled by a handful of billionaires, or whether we have an economy and political system which is controlled by ordinary Americans. That is what tomorrow caucus is about. Nevada, please come out in large numbers. Nevada, please help us move the political revolution forward. Thank you all.